the plaque was found uh, at Old Coral Hall um, by members of uh, the construction team, which has been working on, on the renovation and uh, restoration of, of a historic campus building. And so uh, the plaque was found uh, in what is essentially a storage area at the back of the hall, um, which makes sense um, as that's a, a storage area closest to, to the barrack walls where it was um, first attached. Uh, so the good thing uh, is that the, the university has guidelines um, for ha what should happen with uh, a material artifact that's discovered in a renovation like this, given that Old Coral Hall is a historic building on campus. Uh, and those guidelines stipulate that uh, any uh, objects or discoveries would be um, offered to the Auckland War Memorial Museum. Uh, and that's because the museum holds uh, the collections, the different archaeological collections that have been uh, discovered relating to the Albert Barracks over, um, over the years. So the inscription of the plaque reads, to commemorate the union and camaraderie of Pākehā and Māoris during the Great European War, this tablet was fixed by the Auckland Civic League September 1915 on the remnant of the barrack wall built by friendly Māoris in 1848 after the burning of Kōrarātaka. So the plaque was removed from the barrack walls uh, in 1983 um, and this was after a whole series of debates that had taken place on campus around the representation of Māori and the, the ra and racist presentations of Māori history and culture. And we see, we'd seen um, episodes of, of debate and contested um, activism on campus in the years leading up to that, that year, 1983. So for example, in 1979, we had famously the, the Haka Party incident when um, Pākehā engineering students had been challenged for their um, misappropriation of, of haka by Hetoa, uh, a Māori activist group. So we, it's, a, it's a particularly kind of tense time on campus. So what we know is that the plaque was on the attached to the Albert Barracks wall. The Albert Barracks wall had been under the custodianship of the um, New Zealand Historic Places, as well as um, with the University of Auckland, on which the, the wall is situated. There obviously was a discussion between um, New Zealand Historic Places uh, and the University of Auckland about the removal of the plaque. I think reflecting that sensitivity or the desire to, to be sensitive to um, Māori wishes in, in the 1980s, there was also a desire to preserve this, this historic um, memorial. I can imagine that if I was removing a, a heavy stone pl uh, plaque, I think that I'd want to take it to the nearest storage area um, and that happens to be that um, storage space at the back of, of Old Coral Hall. What we don't know is, is, is um, well, what we know is that it was it was put in that, that storage area. Um, it had been intended to be gifted to the Auckland Museum, so we don't have any records of the museum uh, accepting the plaque. Uh, it may not, the curators may not have wanted it if it had been damaged and graffitied. Um, they might not have appreciated its importance as a, as a artifact of, of protest history, for example, uh, as we might see it today. The significance of the plaque is really in its presentation of, of shared Pākehā and Māori histories. And it does that by invoking at the beginning of the inscription uh, its intention to, as we can read, to commemorate uh, the, the union uh, and the camaraderie. Camaraderie's, camaraderie's been slightly de um, cut off there. Um, but we know from the newspaper accounts of the time that that's what the word was, camaraderie of Pākehā and Māori. And so in the first place that's referencing the joint service of Māori and Pākehā during the First World War. And it significantly, um, it was fixed to the wall by the Auckland Civic League in September 1915. So this makes it one of the first war memorials um, to the First World War. The First World War is referred to here as the, as the Great European War because of course it was an ongoing conflict in 1915 and there were different names given to this evolving conflict. So what's then interesting is that the plaque invokes that joint military service in the First World War, in the Great War, this Great European War, through a reference to an earlier 
shared and contested history. Uh, and it refers to the, the burning of Kororarika. Um, the burning of Kororarika was a, a, a crucial moment um, in, in our colonial conflicts. It's a moment when Kawiti and, and Honeheke Pokai, um, Napu and Natihini uh, Rangatera with, with their um, with their followers attacked Kororarika, a very important settlement in uh, the Bay of Islands. Their intention is to cut down for the fourth time the British flag staff as an act of protest, as an act of resistance to, to the what they perceived as the, the failure of the colonial government to uphold Te Tiriti o Waitangi, the Treaty of Waitangi. And it's a moment that ultimately sparks the Northern War in 1845, and that's the first full military conflict between Māori and Pākehā. In response to that burning of Kororarika, the attack on Kororarika, um, refugees, European refugees fleeing from the town arrive in Auckland and they bring with them news of the outbreak of, of, of war. In response to that, Aucklanders fearful for, of an attack from Northern Māori on Auckland itself, which then, of course, we have to think about as a very new, fledgling colonial settlement. It's the colonial capital, but it's a very small and tenuous foothold of, of European settlement in Tamaki Makoto. And there's a lot of fear that, that Northern Māori will, will do to Auckland what, what has happened to Kororarika in the, in the events of, of the Northern War. So in response to that attack, um, the first um, beginnings of what becomes the Albert Barracks, um, is a, which is the, the largest British military installation. So the expression friendly Māoris, which we can see has been uh, partly removed by the protesters in 1983, um, ref very much reflects the ways that the New Zealand wars were interpreted and presented in 1915. So they reflect a particular kind of idiom or expression of, of colonial history, um, told very much from a British perspective. And it's quite a common phrase that we see um, being attached to different memorials, different war memorials uh, relating to uh, the New Zealand wars in the early 20th century. So interestingly, just up the road here from the University of Auckland, uh, the Simon Street um, New Zealand Wars Memorial that was um, unveiled um, in the new early 1920s also has this language of friendly Māoris. Um, of course, we could think about how it's a phrase that suggests a certain perspective um, and one that kind of as a prefix, if we're going to attach friendly as a prefix, to, um, it suggests the kind of opposite as well, the antithesis of that being rebel or, or perhaps hostile Māori um, who are being excluded here from this. So it's a sort of a British telling of, of the New Zealand wars um, and obviously one that became increasingly contested um, in the 1980s as New Zealanders, Māori and Pākehā were looking for more complex stories of the New Zealand wars that didn't that would share um, different perspectives, particularly those Māori who resisted colonial governments. So as a history lecturer and a curator at, at the, of the New Zealand Wars um, at Auckland War Memorial Museum, uh, this discovery and or rediscovery of this plaque is, is really exciting. Um, I constantly remind my students that the past matters and that it's our role as historians to act as um, interpreters and translators and uh, negotiators of the past and how it shapes our, our present to help um, understand that and to interrogate that. I think the plaque's an interesting find in that uh, it gives us a little bit of a window into that time and how time previous to that, especially around the time of the construction of the wall, uh, were viewed by, by some in the city here. Um, the Māori that were engaged to, to help build this wall uh, were needed because there weren't enough people in the city at the time to, to build it. It was a response to uh, an attack in Kororarika. Um, the builders were paid and they ended up producing a pretty outstanding wall, if you like. Um, some of them were likely my Ngāti Whātua ancestors, but I don't know uh, because on the sign they're just consigned to the status of 
friendly Māori. I think perhaps the intentions of the Auckland Civic League at the time in getting the plaque done uh, were good, uh, but it leaves far too many questions around who the people were and what the purpose of, of having that plaque here uh, was as well. So it gives us an opportunity, this fine gives us an opportunity to look back and ask some of those questions, um, get a sense of the feel of the time. I don't think uh, the label of Friendly Māori uh, is befitting at all uh, for those that existed in, in Tāmaki at the, in those moments. And so this is a good opportunity to revisit those conversations.